you know, when it is a good morning when you um, uh, finish the regular season like we've done um, with a six-game run and end up in the championship game, um, I'm going to revert back to what um, Coach Robinson always said, and that was the credit goes to the man in the arena and certainly the young guys, the team, and what they've responded to, what they've done over the last uh, six weeks to me, they've written their own legacy, they've written their own history to, to, to get off the floor and, and, and do what they've done to put themselves in this position. Uh, shows a lot of character and a lot of heart from a lot of young guys. So um, I'm really, really proud of what, what they've done. Uh, the good part about it, the coaches held together and the players every week, no matter what happened, came out and worked hard. And, and, and as a result, um, we go into championship game. When did you start seeing this kind of characteristic in this team, that they were going to have that heart and the, to come back? Well, the characteristic was that from day one, from a work from a work ethic standpoint and what they were doing, I, I think what, what you was dealing with more so than anything was um, a new coaching staff. Players didn't really know who who we really were and what we really wanted. And I think once they started figuring out how to get it done, um, you know, things started falling our ways. The turnovers started going down, even though we tried to give a few gifts away the other day. But even after that, um, early in the year, we wouldn't have been able to overcome those things. And um, we give up some, some turnovers and, and find our way to, to overcome. And I think that's a sign of a, a good character, hardworking football team. What's it like playing A&M again? You know, y'all losing to them. Would be a lot of revenge there before you go? But I, I don't think you can go into a game with a, um, a revenge factor. And that's why I try to make sure they understand it ain't about revenge. It's about trying to win the next game. And uh, if you win the next game, all the other stuff will, will fade away. Uh, the most important thing here is is to play like we've been playing and, and, and play, and that's to win, not to lose. Go out and play to win, and uh, everything else will take care of itself. Um, you know, got a call from um, from AJ on Saturday congratulating um, me on the win, just like I called him when he beat Perryview, congratulating him on the, on the win <laughs> for giving us this opportunity. You know, the thing about AJ and I go way back. We was roommates uh, in the Super Bowl. So, um, you know, it was going to either be two teammates in the championship either way, whether it was going to be me and A.J. or Monty Coleman and A.J. So I thought it would be best that I end up being in the championship game. <laughs> you talked about the confidence of this team. It was a one-score game when you played here. You had a chance to win the game, and you weren't playing your best. How much confidence does that give you guys going in? Uh, you know, when you look at it, I don't think so much the one score as much as the eight turnovers and still lose by six, it's, it's, it's a confidence builder to realize that if we don't turn the ball over, we're going to have a chance to win the football game. I think that's that's the most important aspect. And uh, we have learned to protect the ball a little more than usual, especially at cruiser time. Um, and penalties, we hadn't had as many penalties over the last uh, three or four games that we had early in the season. And those are things that kill drives and, and keep you from um, moving the football when you have opportunities. Plus, you won't be there. You'll be at a neutral site this time. <laughs> yeah, we'll be at a neutral site, but, you know, it doesn't matter. We say that we just play on the field. We don't worry about the stand. You know, talking about the, the turnovers kind of coming to an end there, is that part of the maturation thing, you believe? Oh, I think I think as, as players, you know, when you got skilled players, whether it's running back, quarterback, they got to understand that uh, killing drive with turnovers is momentum building for the other team. And uh, I think we've, we've done a better job of, of doing that, even though we laid on the ground. But uh, you take a guy like Dorrance, who, you know, got a good problem to lay that ball on the ground a couple of times, but he also prone to break one, too. So <laughs> he found a way to, to make up for that fumble, and, and he certainly did that on Saturday. In terms of rebuilding this program, what did the win against Southern mean? What would a conference championship mean to you guys? Well, you know what, I think the six, the six straight wins is, 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 a, is a plus factor for understanding uh, Gramlin and, and the legacy and the history and what we look for around here. I think that in itself is a plus as far as rebuilding this football team because there's an awful lot of young guys on this football team. And, and for them to see what has transpired over the last few weeks, I think it's very, very um, 
enlightening to them to realize that when spring come, I got to go out there and give everything I got because in the fall, I want to be a part of something. What did you realistically do, think when you came out of training camp in the fall that y'all might could do, really? <laughs> well, they had picked us to win the West. <laughs> did you agree? I mean, did you think that was? No, no. I, you know, number one, we had been to spring. Uh, number two, we had three freshman quarterbacks. Uh, at that time, we didn't know who Dorrance was. And uh, we know there were some adjustments had to be made offensively from a, a spread offense to to a multiple, uh, more of a power type of offense. So uh, that wasn't going to happen overnight, and I think it proved that it didn't happen overnight. It, it was some maceration that had to go on, and, and it happened uh, as, as time went on. And, and now, you know, when you see the linemen, you really – uh, have a better feeling than you did early on because I think they was a little confused from the blocking scheme they come out of to a blocking scheme that they was going into. You spoke about the offensive line of Doris Roberts. He had over 190 yards this week, and they really stepped up their game week in and week out. And it seemed like that's part of the reason why he's been so good and over 1,000 yards this year. Well, that's what we just got to talking about, the way the offensive lineman has changed their mentality from uh, more of a – uh, shield block to power blocking, and uh, I think also the, the, the weight room has, has given them a little more confidence. The way uh, compared to where they was working when I first got here to where they working now as a group, opposed to just individuals coming in doing the day and getting the work in. You know, I think it's a little more competitive. But I think to make them feel like they're a lot stronger and a lot tougher than um, than they was at first because they're working with their peers and, and, and their teammates. At what point in the season did you get your guys to believe that they can win the season out? Like they can win the season out. Well, we when we kicked it off in in in, in Shreveport, we we had a belief that we can win. I mean, you don't you don't go on the field not thinking you can. So there was never a time that I didn't think we could win. It's just that it was four times early we didn't win. Uh, but at the end of the day, every time you go out for a game, you you believe you got a chance to win the football game. Considering the youth and everything, the uncertainties, Doug, is this your best overall coaching job as a staff and as a head? It's, you know, but it, it's hard for me to say, you know, when you're talking about yourself, but it's easy to say that this is the, uh, well, let, let me say this. I, I look at this football team and, and I reminisce, um, and I very seldom talk about, you know, myself. I reminisce the Super Bowl team that I played on. This team reminds me a lot. It, it's not the most talented football team, but it has become one of the most unified football teams that, that you're going to be around. And I, and I think that, that has made the difference. The characters shown up, and there's a will to win, and they believe they're going to win, and they go out there to win. I think that makes a difference. Talked about the change in offensive philosophy in the line. Was there a change in what Coach Yoshida did defensively, or was that pretty much his same? I, I don't think, and that's, the defense is intact. Uh, I don't think uh, that much changed defensively. It was basically the offense. Because, you know, defense was on the field an awful lot early on during the season because we could not sustain drives. But I think once we learned what, what first down meant and, 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 and how to kind of control the ball a little more, I think it gave the defense a little more light. Um, and, you know, they've been playing lights out. They've given up a lot of yards in a couple of games. But they found a way to, to finish it, and I think that's the bottom line. The fourth quarter now for us has been played like the first quarter, where early on the fourth quarter um, really was not played like that. When you took over this job, you talked about the excitement of going back to the sidelines. Do you ever catch your, a moment like maybe Saturday with your son, like, hey, this is still pretty cool and it's a pretty good moment? Well, you know what? As a coach, you know, man, it's it's – it's something that you, you really can't explain at times um, because the emotions get high and the emotions get low. And um, you know, But when the uh, clock hits zero, you know you kind of come back to yourself and realize that it's a game. But um, those 60 minutes, it's, it's, a, little, it's, it's a different high. It's, you know, and I always go back and I'm go back to Coach Rob. You know, I didn't understand what, what he used to say when, when I was a player. And that was no man is, is too big to coach the American youth. Um, now it's, it's understandable when you see young guys on the field making plays. And, and you've been there. You've done that. And, you, you know, that's that's the thrill that I get out of them, watching plays being made. Talk about your son's performance. 
I thought overall the offense played pretty well. You know, uh, whether or not it was the passing game, whether or not it was the running game, I thought they played pretty well. What has DJ done specifically better down the stretch? I mean, you say, you know, turnovers are limited, but is there anything? I think as a whole, you know, not only just DJ, but, but, but maturing, and uh, especially from the quarterback standpoint, is it's maturing. They got to understand. I think the last two games has, has been um, a pretty good uh, observation of what maturing is all about, and, and, and that's making plays and knowing when to do certain things and, and the people rallying around you, knowing what to do at a certain time. Like um, the second TD, I don't know which one it was, in the end zone, where Southern has been, been playing cover two all day. All day, and all of a sudden they came up in a blitz situation and he went press, no help. And uh, DJ changed the play, and, and Mario was in the end zone. I mean, those kind of things you, you coach every day in the, in, the, in, the, in the meeting room, and you hope that anybody who's in that position picks it up. Uh, but uh, DJ was fortunate enough to pick it up. The offensive line picked it up because it's audible. You got to listen. You got to know what's going on, and, and it worked in our favor. Do you think the couple of weeks he sat with that turf toe gave him a different perspective and maybe helped some of that maturation? <laughs> he told me that. <laughs> now, he did tell me, um, you know, nobody wants to sit the bench. But, but, but he did tell me that he, he got a better sense, a better feel of what was really going on. You know, you, you're still talking about freshmen. The game is a little faster than, than you think. And um, he got a chance to let the game slow down. And uh, hopefully from now on that um, – he, no matter whether it's him or Frank, that, that, that they control the game and not let the game control them. Have you decided on your quarterback starter for the championship? Not really. we got a couple of weeks, buddy. we got time to think about that. You're serious, though. <laughs> no, no, I'm not serious. <laughs> what kind of schedule do you have for the next two weeks? Uh, today we we actually going to give uh, the players and the coaches an uh, evening to, to relax a little bit. I think they deserve it. Um, we'll be back tomorrow. Uh, Four thirty practice. We're gonna get Wednesday off, and uh, we'll be back Thursday for four thirty practice, and um, we'll do condition on Friday and Saturday, and come back for a full practice on Sunday. You said there was forty thousand of the game. It didn't look like it on TV. You think Bayou Classic still healthy in New Orleans? Well, I think it has to be in New Orleans. Or you're gonna go to a home and home, and certainly, uh, I think it's better to be in be in New Orleans than than anywhere else. I think. Um, Somewhere along the line, I think the school's got to make some adjustment, in, in my opinion. And, you know, I know my opinion don't count for a lot right here sometimes. It's, um, I think they got to bring the ticket prices down. And they got to have a general mission and price for, for a lot of these students around there, you know. Um, the way I look at it, when you look at the top of the dome and, 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 and there's not a lot of fans up there, you know, a general mission $10 ticket ain't bad. Not bad, but that's, that's my opinion. I know it don't count. Have they done better, uh, Doug, on the hotel situation and kind of lowered that and helped out or not? No, I don't think the hotels really help. You know, I think that's where they sit in New Orleans and everybody can rally around. And But I think somewhere along the line, we, we got to be the one to, to force that because yeah. um, when they play the, um, the other games down there, I don't think the hotels go up that much. What's what's the conference game down that they have? The championship Sun Belt? Mm, yeah, Sun Belt. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think you can get a room for ninety nine dollars, you know. So I think some changes has to be made. Now whether or not um, we got people in place to make those changes or not, I don't know. But I might be out of bounds even talking about that. I don't know. I think you're in bounds. <laughs> So I say it anyway, though. Yeah. <laughs> what kind of roommate was AJ at the Super Bowl? AJ a, a, a. A. Jones is, is actually a, a high character individual, great guy. You know, we we got a great relationship, and um, you know, it's it's unfortunate we're not coaching together. We're coaching against each other, but we know that um, hearts of hard. You know, it's amazing because when we walked off that field uh, when they beat us, you know, the first thing he told me was, he said, "I know I see you again." You know, it's amazing. And uh, for this to come to fruition like it is, you know, I think it's a good thing. Have you guys heard from any teammates as far as picking sides for this game? Not really. I know Monty pissed off with us. <laughs> but he'll get over too. <laughs> but no, no, no. They, they're not going to call, but I'm sure, um, you know, I got a, I got a text from um, Bruce Allen 
uh, saying that that's good that two Redskins are playing for the champion in, in this WAC conference. Speak to the, the one of the things I noticed about the poise the team had and just like the humbleness of them being able to control themselves throughout the, the game in terms of something that is emotional. Well, I think number one, we got to take a hat off to the you know the coaches who coach each position. Number one, you know, and, and one thing I've done is made every coach responsible for their own guys. Um, I try, I kind of take the uh, the John McKay approach. You know, when when a guy uh, messes up on the field, John never go to that guy. He always want to know who his coach is, but he don't just say who the coach. He use use a couple of adjectives that to say who is the coach. You know what I mean? I don't do that. Uh, <laughs> But no, I, I think it's, it's, it's a tribute to um, staff, uh, uh, letting them understand that, that that we are Grambling and we got to treat ourselves like we're Grambling. What about Zoltan Riazzo? He had one of the longest kicks in Grambling history. That's it's, it's not it's not a lot to say about Mr. Automatic. Yeah. <laughs> you know that's what he's been for. He's been, you know, getting to getting on the scoreboard first, and you go back to the Jackson game. You know, he's he's been a valuable part of this 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 run that we've had.